Welcome back to Fashion Care. Time for my review for qualifying for the 2024 uh, Canadian Grand Prix. Pretty exciting session. Uh, the rain didn't come even though you know many people thought it would. Uh, yeah, a pretty unexpected result and some pretty crazy knockouts as well. So uh, starting uh, qualifying, there was an 80% chance of rain during the session. And like I said, that rain would not come. Uh, Stroll comes on the radio quite early saying the tires are cold. Uh, signs cut some grass. Uh, after those first initial runs in Q1, uh, the bottom five drivers were Sonoda, Joe, Ricardo, Perez, and Sargent. Perez, a bit of a surprise being there, he really needed to improve on his final run. Uh, really high track evolution, um, Russell mows some grass at turn three, and Piastri comes up with the radio, thinks he was impeded by Hamilton and Sonoda, but the stewards would say that there was no further investigation for that. Uh, Gasly goes second fastest with three minutes left in the session, really highlighting uh, how high the track evolution was, given we know that the Alpine uh, is not that fast of a car. Uh, Perez was still in the bottom five at this point. Perez was knocked out in Q1, uh, really poor lap, uh, knocked out by Albon who uh, got himself up into Q2 at that point. So uh, your five drivers knocked out in Q1 were Perez, Bottas, Ocon, Hulkenberg, and Joe Hulkenberg. Uh, perhaps another track in my preview I did a couple days ago. Uh, I talked about how Hulkenberg had one of the best records, head-to-head uh, -head qualifying records here at this track. But I guess not to be today. Uh, and I believe Norris was fastest in that session. Then we get into Q2. Uh, fans were starting to put ponchos on early, so maybe we would have some rain. Uh, early laps could be very important if rain came later. Uh, the drivers in the bottom five after those first runs were Ricardo, Stroll, Albon, Gasly, and Sargent. Uh, Albon has a pit stop disaster after that first run. Basically, uh, they dropped the car off the jacks. Then the, basically a wheel nut got, it seems like a wheel nut, a wheel nut got uh, cross-threaded. So basically they couldn't put a new, a new uh, wheel on. Uh, until they had to wheel the car back into the pits to get it all fixed. Uh, and then uh, fortunately for Albon, they were able to get the car back out uh, and the F1 graphic told us that we would have rain in nine minutes. Uh, th those last ones come and uh, quite to the shock of many, both Ferraris were out in Q2. They decided to do both, both of their cars on used tires, even though there was a very high risk of rain uh, in Q3 and everyone else was basically going on used tires. So a bit of a blunder there for Ferrari strategy it would seem, uh, yeah, and a bit unfortunate for both of them. Uh, so Leclerc signs both out, 11th and 12th, uh, and then Sergeant Magnus and Gasly were also out. And George Russell was fastest of everyone else out on track in Q2. So we get to Q3, and some drivers, again, using used tires to start because they'd used so many tires uh, in Q1, in Q2, uh, just because the track evolution has been so high. Uh, Verstappen sets the benchmark at 12, 358. Russell then lowers it to a 12, 0, 0, 0. Uh, Hamilton second with Piastri fourth and Stroll up in fifth. Uh, Piastri goes second uh, on his second lap with a 12.103. Uh, Norris then goes second, uh, 0.021 off of uh, Russell's time. Uh, Alonso Ricardo setting fastest for sector, so maybe they would be in for uh, a shock result. Verstappen then ties Russell's time, so it does a 12.000, but according to the rules, uh, if two drivers tie, uh, the driver who set the time first uh, is the one who is ahead on track. So uh, t while he ties the time, is still behind him. Uh, Russell can't improve on his lap, Hamilton can't either. Uh, so we end up with George Russell getting a second career pole position, uh, first since Hungary, 2022. Of course he started on the front uh, in first uh, for the 2022 Brazilian Grand Prix, but that was not officially pole because of the whack uh, qualifying format they had back then. So a bit of a surprise session. Uh, I don't think many people coming into this weekend would have had uh, a Mercedes on pole, especially their form recently. Uh, but yeah, for whatever reason, the car works very, very well here. So taking a look at your grid for tomorrow's Grand Prix, uh, Russell on pole, Verstappen second alongside him. It'll be interesting to see how the race plays out. Uh, because so much of the practice sessions have been wet, we have basically no data on tire wear, tire, uh, race pace, that sort of thing. So I think it's really all to play for for the drivers in the top four to five positions. With that being said, uh, the driver on pole has won almost every race for the last three or four years, or I guess five or six years because we have the two non-races because of COVID. Uh, but the only one who didn't win was, of course, Metal in 2019. So 
Uh, looking further down, we have Norris Third, Piastri Fourth, so Owen Old McLaren second row. Ricardo, uh, Ricardo fifth, really good result for him in the RB. Alonso six, Hamilton seventh. A bit of a disappointment there, just not able to get a uh, lap hooked up in the end. Eight, Sonoda, ninth, Stroll, tenth, Albon. Great job for him getting into Q3. Uh, then you have the two Ferraris, uh, Leclerc and uh, 11th, Sainz and 12th. It'll be interesting to see how high up they can climb tomorrow. I would say if they have strong race pace, I think they might be able to get like a top six result in a best case scenario. But, you know, if their race pace isn't so strong, they might even struggle just to get points. Uh, Sergeant 13th, 14th, Magnuson, 15th, Gasly, 16th, Paris. Again, another shocker, especially after that contract extension. Uh, I'll be interested to see what he can do. I think if it's dry, uh, he might be able to get some points. If it's wet, it's really, really hard to say. Uh, 18th, uh, 17th Bottas, 18th Ocon, 19th Hulkenberg, and 20th show, who's had a shocker of a weekend, two crashes, I guess, in practice, uh, and yeah, qualifying dead last for the Grand Prix. So there you go. Uh, in terms of predictions, I, I would hesitate to take a Russell win tomorrow just because we don't know. They haven't had the strongest race pace, and you can't overtake at this track. Um, we know how strong Verstappen is, so I think I would still say Verstappen's the favorite for the Grand Prix win, but you know I think Russell has an excellent chance of getting his first podium of the year. So there you go. There's my review of qualifying uh, for the 2024 Canadian Grand Prix. And of course, we do have the risk of rain for tomorrow, uh, in which case kind of all bets are off, and I think you know that would probably just help uh, Verstappen even more, given we know how strong he is in those conditions. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with my review of the Grand Prix. Goodbye.